Okay, guys, welcome back. Today, we're going to be continuing with the American Revolution. And these are the notes we're going to be using. So our American Revolution Notes 4, Cause of the American Revolution 3. We're focusing on the Stamp Act today. And so you're going to have these two column notes as we go along. Okay. And so when we left, left off, we talked about how, remember, Britain has this huge debt from the French and Indian War that they need to pay off. And this new prime minister came in and he needed to increase revenue. So... He went with these three methods. He's going to try and reduce the smuggling. We talked about that. Protecting the fur trade. But the one we didn't get to was raising taxes. And that's what we're going to be focusing on today. So, of course, remember, we sent all these extra troops over to America to protect the fur trade. But, again, those people cost money. So taxes is going to be something that's going to be cut up. And the first major tax that we're going to see is the Stamp Act. And you're going to watch a video on this, I know. And you also will have some readings on it because it really is kind of a fundamental, the huge moment in American history. This is the first tax the Parliament's ever going to put directly onto the people. Okay. So on number one of our notes, the purpose of the Stamp Act is to make money. It's to raise revenue. That's the purpose of it. And it puts a tax on pretty much every bit of paper that the economy can use. This would be everything from like your marriage license to newspapers and magazines, even playing cards is going to be have a tax on it. So any bit of paper you'd have to pay a tax on. So it really, really is the first tax that, unlike the Sugar Act and those things that were designed to catch smugglers, that really only affected shippers. This tax, if you think about all the stuff we use paper for nowadays, it's really going to affect everybody. And that was by design because, remember, the whole point is to make money. So Parliament wants something that everyone's going to have to use, that was paper. So back then, you got to remember this is a time before Facebook and, you know, TV news and that kind of stuff. Most people get all their information from newspapers. And this is going to be a problem for the British because, as we see forward, it's going to affect probably the wrong people that you'd want to affect. So the colonists, they're really upset. They feel that this is against their rights. So what they're, the reason on number three, if we look there, is that there's this myth out there that the colonists had never paid taxes before. That's not true. The colonists had paid taxes before because they had their colonial governments and stuff. And some of that money had even gone back to Britain. The difference is, though, that the people who had put the tax on them was their colonial legislature, the people that they had voted for, that self-government idea. Okay. Instead now, this tax is being put on them by the parliament who's 3,000 miles and an ocean away in London. So what we see come out of this and what you're putting down on number three is that they, the economists argue they haven't given their consent to be taxed or they haven't given their permission to be taxed. You know, we didn't vote for anybody in parliament. They don't represent us. So how can they tell us we have to follow this law? Or we have to pay this tax if we didn't vote to put them there. That would seem against kind of what they believe the government should be. So we get this great battle cry of it called no taxation without representation. by One of the more famous rhymes in American history. And so as a response, we're going to see some backlash from some groups. Now, the important thing to remember is who's going to be the most affected groups by this Stamp Act, okay? And on number four, we're looking there. Okay, you got to think about what kind of people are going to use a lot of paper. Well, your newspaper printers, those people are going to be affected. So that would be something to put on number four. And remember, that's the people who tell people what to think. So really influence people. Not people you'd probably want to upset if you're the government. Another group that's going to be really affected by it. People that are involved in a lot of, you know, court cases and that kind of stuff. Your lawyers and judges and government officials and politicians. Not the people you want to be upsetting if you're the British Parliament. These are the people that know how to organize things, know how to work the law in their favor. And what we see here is a lot of organization. We're looking at number five now. The colonists are going to start boycotting. Now, they didn't call it boycotting back then, but it's what we call it today. And what boycotting is, is... You're going to refuse to buy British goods. So anything from Britain, you're not going to buy. Now, this is a big deal for the colonists because remember, this is at a time when they didn't produce a lot of stuff that they that they like. So the Brits, so they have to stop buying stuff that they like. This is a big deal, but it's what they're going to start doing. They're not going to pay this tax. They're not going to use this paper. Maybe they're going to get paper stuff, but the printers, they're not going to pay the tax on it. So they boycott as much British stuff as they can, even tea and stuff like that. So this is going to be kind of 
what they're going to be arguing for. But mainly at this point, they're just not paying the Stamp Act, which means for Parliament, the whole point is to make money. You're not making money, and you've made all these important people mad. So on number six, a group that's formed in response to this, to protest it, is known as the Sons of Liberty. It's going to be a very, very important group as we go forward. And what the Sons of Liberty do, they are a group of very politically activated colonists. They feel they're going to be the leaders of the patriot cause when we get to the time where people call for independence. We're not there yet, but these people will be very, very important as we get there. So, England and the Parliament kind of make a big mistake here, okay? And what happens is it's not the colonists boycotting that pressures the, the Parliament so much as English business owners pressure Parliament. Because the English business owners who, by the way, do vote for people in Parliament, they're going to say, you need to get rid of the Stamp Act because we're losing lots of money. And on number seven, the reason they're losing lots of money is the Sons of Liberty and all those other people, they've been doing a good enough job job boycotting these British goods, that if the colonists aren't buying it, now as a British business person, I'd be losing money. And that's not okay. So I go to Parliament and say, it's got to go. The Stamp Act must go. So England's going to repeal the Stamp Act in 1766. That is less than a year after they put it in place. So basically, Parliament's just taught them this great lesson of, hey, if the colonists on number eight, if you organize enough, then you're going to not have to, then we'll listen to you and we'll get rid of these unpopular laws. And if you've ever thought about it, and so this is something you could put on number eight, if you're organized, if you're determined, if you're unified enough, you'll get, we'll give into your demands. We'll repeal it. It's kind of like the deal where we talked about, you know, that screaming kid in the supermarket who wants a candy bar. And sometimes the parents will eventually give in to appease that kid and make him be quiet to buy him a candy bar. Well, it's kind of foolish because then you just taught that kid, hey, anytime you want a candy bar, just start screaming and making lots of noise okay, and being annoying. Here, the colonists have been taught, hey, just be determined and organized enough and we'll get rid of the law. Where And they do this after less than a year. Had they just left the Stamp Act in place for a few years, the colonists probably get used to it. And it's no big deal. But instead, they've taught the colonists this lesson that you organize, we'll listen to you, we'll do what you want. The other thing that does that's a mistake is on the very same day Parliament passes getting rid of the Stamp Act, they repeal the Stamp Act, they pass what's called the Declaratory Act. Okay, And this right says that Parliament could tax the cons if they wanted to. Like, okay, so we're not going to tax you with the Stamp Act, but just so you know, we could if we really wanted to. Now, it serves absolutely no purpose. It's a very immature kind of thing to do, and it really just makes the colonists mad. It's a slap in their face. So we're going to see how this plays out going forward. And on number nine, again, what you're saying is it's saying the colonists could be taxed if they wanted to, but the parliament out of the kindness of their heart is not doing the same. But in the future, we could tax you if you want to. And we'll see what those future taxes look like going forward.